Hi guys, Mike Rea from Benchmark Sims and today we are taking a look at the F15C which was heavily improved with update 3. So we are taking a look uh, on the ramp start, uh, uh, maybe uh, diving into some systems and some uh, actually uh, yeah, development states of the uh, F15C overall. So it uh, is already a beautiful implementation. Uh, yeah, uh, kudos to all those uh, coders and artists who created this, so let's dive into it. Okay, welcome to the cockpit of the F-15C. Um, as you uh, will notice, we have a beautiful cockpit uh, here now available, so it's uh, very well made. First things first, uh, we have the left console, we have in the middle the main panel, and we have the right console and let's talk about uh, ram start the f15 is now ram start capable and um, yeah we will go through the process now let's uh, mention first uh, we have some documents as well now for the f15 we have uh, the dash one that's 34 and checklists Uh, checklists include all uh, normal and abnormal procedures. Normal procedures are starting the engines and uh, basically the whole taxi uh, proce uh, the taxi procedure. So uh, if you want to uh, re uh, 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 read, so to say, our what we're doing here, so the BMS 15 checklists are your way to go. Okay, let's start. Okay, let's uh, start with uh, step one after our cockpit interior checks. Uh, the first step is to put the air source no on norm, which is over here. A little bit hard to see. Um, second step, JFS switch on. Third step, um, JFS handle. Uh, you can pull it uh, uh, or turn it to the right, so left uh, mouse click would be uh, start GFS 1. We don't want to have that for now. Or we want a GFS 2, so turn it to the right. So, GFS starts. Ready light is on. Steps 5, 6, 7. Put right master arm engine on. Flip that down. Engine, right engine selector switch on which is this guy, EEC switch on, and that should be the first section, so starting the first engine. We have to make sure uh, that the engine, the correct engine is selected, so you can um, uh, have that feed call, uh, callback in, the, uh, in your key file. So I just activate the titles for now here, so uh, you, there's a press where you can select the, the engine. So I selected now the, the right engine first, uh, because we need it first. Alright, then uh, next step is to uh, raise and release the finger lift right engine, this, which is this guy. Click it. Okay, now we are checking the gauges. And the RPM indicator should now uh, uh, going up. Uh, up to 22% and at 22% we are switching uh, the uh, throttle cutoff to idle. 20%, 22 and idle. So, checking the gauges. Of course you should be aware of the engine limitations as well. which are also mentioned in the checklist. Okay. Temperature goes down, which is good. 72%. <coughs> At this point, you can already set uh, your radio. So if you want to do any back arm checks uh, up front, um, so you can already set, uh, so your radio is already powered. But we come to the radios later. Um, Second, uh, we are now at step, uh, 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 let's see, we are now at step 15. So, J 
GFS uh, switch is on still, starter light is on. So we are now selecting the left uh, master switch, which is here, the left engine master switch, then uh, uh, generator on, EEC on. So again, we have to make sure that we are selecting now the left engine. So let's uh, make sure that we are did already. So this is set. And now uh, we are doing the same thing. Um, we are pressing the uh, release, uh, the pull and release uh, knob over here on the left side. Uh, maybe sometimes it's a little bit hard to see it. Um, I recommend then to uh, switch again to the, to the right throttle a little bit and uh, put it a little bit forward. So let's do this here. And uh, now you're able, you should be able to push the release and pull switch. So here we go, we'll put this back and let's select left engine. So RPM should increase, as you can see. No warnings. So we are waiting for 25% this time. Twenty-five and cut off to idle. Checking gauges. Everybody, everything is looking good. Temperature. There we go. Okay, we have to make sure we select now both engines, which is now. So gauge is looking good. We are set basically for the uh, starting engine sequence. Can now close the camera to canopy because uh, those guys over here uh, will be taking off in a second. Um, so some juicy F-16s. I love those. Um, all right, what's next? After engine startup. So oxygen first, uh, internal lights as desired. So we have uh, internal lights uh, all over the place. So we have uh, them split it for each panel. So it's uh, pretty cool uh, to see, but I switched them out for now because it's daylight, so we don't need them. <coughs> all right, then uh, we are verifying uh, also the external lights. Um, so we have uh, External lights available, so uh, we have uh, uh, we have anti-collision and we have formation lights. Not fully implemented yet, but uh, there will be. So let's talk about radios. Uh, after the right engine start, you could already set your radios. The F15 has two UHF radios uh, for now. Um, so this is uh, by real life, but you can also set one radio which is radio 2 to vhf uh, but uh, never mind <coughs> i recommend using radio 2 for external communications like for atc airwax uh, and whatnot so the first uh, channel uh, would be uh, channel 2 which is the uh, ground agency in the com letter um, and for the intra-flight communication, we have here radio one uh, below the hut. So to say, uh, we set this on channel 15, which is UHF 15, which uh, should fit to your DTC, uh, um, yeah, uh, com ladder as well. So if you are flying single player, you can uh, also communicate with your AI wingmen. You just have to instruct them to switch to a backup uniform. Uh, that works pretty well. Um, okay, we are now at uh, step six in the after engine start. So, which reads NCIN mob selector knob to GC. GC means gyro compass. Uh, um, so it's basically the highest uh, quality of alignment. Also, we set the data select to PP. And now we are pressing the numpad ready 
and uh, next would be pressing the enter button and this basically starts the alignment uh, of the INS. Um, <clears throat> so the uh, after 60 seconds there will be uh, an, a little light flashing which reads LALN which stands for alignment after two minutes. Uh, there's an, a partial alignment uh, achieved and after four minutes we have a full alignment so in the next four minutes we don't have to take care about this next we are switching off mpcd so it's not called mfd in the f16 it's called mpcd which is called for multi-purpose color display all right switch that guy on <coughs> all right so next we are uh, loading our DTC, uh, which is uh, done uh, clicking on the manual and then DTM, and then we are clicking on read. So this will load our DTC. Next, VSD uh, on. VSD is the vertical situation display, but it reads still uh, radar off, um, which is totally fine. Uh, um, we come to that in a second. Uh, HUD uh, also as desired, so let's switch the HUD as well on. And uh, next will be step 14, ISS, uh, ICS for as desired. So we're switching on radar, we are switching on uh, uh, our ICS and also our EV, EWWS. Um, so this stuff can align as well. And next step would be step uh, 15. Um, so we are switching the radar on. If you're switching the radar on, uh, on the VSD there will start a bit test for the radar uh, which goes about one minute I think or 90 seconds <coughs> something like that uh, it will take a little bit but, but as you can see now the bit test is running all right so we we mixed up a little bit the order of the checklist but uh, bear with me um, so it's uh, I'm still learning so that should be uh, it for the um, first steps before taxiing. Uh, we are waiting now for uh, for alignment. As you can see now, the alignment phase first phase is over, so alignment is now flashing. All right, um, we are set. Um, as you can see, the alignment is finished. The ALM text uh, blinks. Uh, uh, very fast so that means uh, the alignment is done so we are switching IN, uh, the mode knob to INS clicking enter and uh, deselecting the numpad with the ready knob um, what you also can do but not necessary uh, you can uh, switch the um, data selector so basically this this uh, indicates what is shown here right now it's on PP which means this is your actual uh, position uh, you can switch it to dest uh, where you have uh, 12 steer points available uh, B is for your own uh, your takeoff airport your home plate so to say then you have uh, one two three up to 11, 11 so and you have also three mark points but mark points uh, as well as uh, manipulating any data is not implemented yet but this will come uh, in the future <coughs> okay uh, next would be checking uh, flaps checking air brakes checking refueling door um, so we can switch the flaps uh, to down position so keep in mind this needs to be done manually so we don't have any flickers here uh, one two ship f 16 request taxi exactly let's switch this to Agent this one. to another channel for now uh, and as you can uh, notice the radio working are working as well um, so um, uh, if you check all uh, all uh, yeah trim brake uh, rudder uh, etc and your stick movement then you're basically ready to taxi uh, you can also set the uh, the CMS so the ECM uh, program uh, or CMD program to uh, standby already so the the bit test will start there as well and set lights as desired and that's basically it so um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little video and have fun 
with the F-15, it's a really a different jet uh, what you get, uh, what you are used to from the F-16. But it's very, very much fun, and uh, uh, yeah, I think BMS uh, gets a new milestone here because for mission creating and you know, uh, like uh, package possibilities, this will set a new whole era of uh, missions. Um, check this ultimator real quick. So we have to set it right. I think it's about here. So that's it from my side. Um, hope you enjoyed it and take care and enjoy BMS. Bye.